Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. We're in Jerusalem with Michael Wersofsky. He's the founder of the Alternative Information Center. He's the author of On the Border. Thanks for joining us again. Hello. So why does Jerusalem matter so much to everybody? First question, what is Jerusalem? Uh, and there is nothing like Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a construction. There is absolutely nothing in common with Jerusalem of King David and the uh, Pisgat Zeev settlement uh, that is part of Jerusalem today. Jerusalem, in fact, was defined by a group of officers in 1967 uh, who got the following order. Draw a line with maximum territory minimum of Arab population. Rahabam Zeevi, one of the most racist uh, generals and leaders of Israel, assassinated a few years ago, uh, was in charge of it. So it, Jerusalem was defined by negative. Ramallah couldn't be part of Jerusalem, so it stopped at Ramallah. Bethlehem couldn't be decently part of Jerusalem, so it stopped at Bethlehem. And all the rest was named Jerusalem. Though only 12% was ever Jerusalem in one time in history. The so-called reunification of Jerusalem, it's a very sexy concept, reunification. No one likes a city divided with a wall in between. So the concept of reunification was used to annex as much as possible of the West Bank to Israel under the pretext of reuniting Jerusalem. Now this is all in the, 1960s, the result of the 1967 war. Yeah. In the immediate result. In the for, for our viewers who don't know the history, just explain what was Jerusalem in 48, and then what is it after 67? So I will start even before 48. Jerusalem was a, a, a small, marginal, and non-important city, both for the Arabs and for the Jews. Before 48. Before 48. Zionist leaders hated Jerusalem. Ben-Gurion was obliged to make Jerusalem his, his the capital for uh, diplomatic reasons, but he was escaping Jerusalem every evening. He has his apartment in uh, uh, Keren Kayemet Street in uh, Tel Aviv. For them, Jerusalem And just for viewers who don't know, Ben-Gurion is one of the founders of the State of Israel. The founder of Israel. And he and, and his surrounding, for them, Jerusalem was diaspora. Religious Jews, very oriental, they want modernity, they want West. Tel Aviv was Israel. Jerusalem was diaspora, was not different from Marrakesh or from uh, Lodz in Poland. They need it because, uh, uh, and I would say for the Arabs it was the same. Jerusalem was a small, marginal, very small, very, very small, not a city, a town. Important for uh, pilgrims, yes. Uh, Muslim pilgrims coming to Al-Aqsa, Jews pilgrims. Al-Aqsa being the mosque in, uh, in the old city. Third hol holiest uh, site of Islam. Uh, Jews coming to the Waning Wall and uh, Christian to the Christian holy sites in Jerusalem and around. Because the 1947 partition resolution of the United Nations made Israel, made Jerusalem an international city not belonging neither to the future Jewish state nor to the future Arab state in Palestine, uh, there was a competition who will, be, who will keep Jerusalem. So Jerusalem became something relevant, while from a sociological point of view, I would say it's an irrelevant, it was an irrelevant city. After 67, another problem for the Israeli leaders, anything relevant to history and to confirm roots in Jerusalem was on the eastern part. West Jerusalem was a modern city without nothing. No one sign of the past. So the whole argumentation, the whole discourse of we are coming back to the roots, we are coming back to the heritage of our fathers, was embodied in East Jerusalem, where the Temple Mount was, uh, and some other sites. And where the Palestinians were. But also where the Palestinians not, were. Not where that line would have been drawn. <laughs> Not, not on the other side of where they would have drawn the line trying to get rid of, Jer yeah, created Jerusalem without, without Palestinians. Without Palestinians at all, they couldn't. But, and there is a holy figure, holy number, 27, uh, uh, 2773. This was the ratio between Jews and Arabs in the two parts of Jerusalem together. There were 70% Jews in 1967, 20, 
3% Arabs. And somehow the goal of a very well-coordinated policy and long-term planning is to keep the ratio of Jews and Arabs, or Israelis and Palestinians, in Jerusalem more or less the same. And paradoxically, it was a victory for both sides. After 45 years of annexation of East Jerusalem, uh, one third of the population, a little bit more than 27%, but still uh, it's not a bad result from the Israelis. They kept the Palestinian populations under one third. And for the Palestinians it was not so bad because they grew from 27 to 33% despite a systematic policy of, we call it, uh, administrative ethnic cleansing. It was not ethnic cleansing in the brutal way of Yugoslavia, for example, or Rwanda, or of Palestine in 1948. It was more with administrative measures. For example? For example, no family reunification. If a Jerusalemite married a non-Jerusalemite, uh, the spouse who is not Jerusalemite cannot come here. So either the family will live separated or the Jerusalemite will have to leave. Uh, lost IDs, they call it. A Jerusalemite who have left Jerusalem for studies, for example, for too long a period of time, which is a definition which changed according uh, uh, throughout the years, lost his residency in Jerusalem, even if he has property, his family, his job, everything. He was a bad student and he went to Amman and instead of three years he, he remained there th four years or five years. He lost his ID card. So if I understand the, st the status of Palestinian correctly, there's uh, three essential statuses. You're either, uh, or even four if you include Gaza. You can be a resident of Gaza, you can be a resident of the West Bank, <clears throat> you can be a, a citizen if, you're, if you have Israeli citizenship, or you can have a residency status in East Jerusalem, which is its own special status. Exactly. In fact, there are many more categories. Can you can be a refugee also. Uh, and, uh, um, and inside the Palestinians of Israel, you have internal refugees. There are Palestinians with Israeli ID card, but they are refugees because they cannot go back to their village of origin. Okay, let's go back. So, so why does this irrelevant city become so relevant? First it became a city. In order to assess the Jewish character of what was annexed, the, the, that part of the West Bank was annexed, there was a systematic policy, I said, of reducing as much as possible the number of Palestinians, but also increasing as much as possible the number of Jews by building a belt of new settlements, urban settlements, in the borders of the annexed part of Jerusalem, who are today 270,000 people, 270,000 settlers inside Jerusalem, in, in big suburbs, in fact suburbs, like Gilo, like Pisgat Zev, like uh, uh, Talpiot East. All these are huge suburbs, adding to Jerusalem another problem. Jerusalem is a city without industry. It's the poorest city among the ten big cities of Israel is by far the poorest. Let me back up one sec for, so everyone understands. Before 1967, who governs East Jerusalem? Before 1967, West Jerusalem was the self-proclaimed Israeli capital. East Jerusalem was part of the West Bank under the King, Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Not the capital. The capital was Amman, uh, but it was a Jordanian city. Jordan annexing the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. So it was part of Jordan. As a consequence of the 67 war, Israel now occupies the West Bank, East Jerusalem. Jordan relinquishes its claim to the West Bank, and now it's occupied territory. Uh, yes, uh, with one difference. While the West Bank, the whole of except East Jerusalem, is under Israeli law an occupied, a military occupied territory, East Jerusalem has been annexed to Israel. So Israeli law applies, and not the military orders in East Jerusalem. And the, Israeli, and the Palestinian residents of Jerusalem are permanent residents, like kind of green card in Israel. But yeah. not citizens. Not citizens. In fact, the Israeli made the offer in 67, but a kind of typical 
Jesuits offered, knowing very well that they will say no. So they were very large. Because then they have to accept the, the principle of the occupation. The principle of occupation, and they wouldn't. And to desolidarize with the rest of the West Bank population and, and Gaza. Uh, so Israel made the offer, they say no. Now, many Palestinians, or not many, there are Palestinian families who are saying, okay, we are ready to be citizens, say too late. Too late. You can, but it's very complicated and you have to be a collaborator for that. In the next segment of the interview, let's talk more about the significance and what's happening now with Jerusalem. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Michelle Warshawski on The Real News Network.